All right. Ever since September the 10th, when J.P. Morgan's COO warned that their net interest income guidance just may be too optimistic, we've seen some pressure on the banks. I want to ask you what he had to say. Do you think that's a read on all the banks or is that just J.P. Morgan? Is this something we need to be concerned about this earnings season? I think this is something that we need to be concerned about this earnings season fairly broadly. Um, you know, investors have been very optimistic about net interest margins holding firm and perhaps even getting better as the yield curve steepened. We still think that's likely to happen next year, but we haven't seen it yet. And so the third quarter numbers could be strained across the board. So we had a hotter than expected CPI read yesterday. We get another inflation read today. Uh, we often talk about these reports moving the market. In your mind, could these possibly be moving some of the guidance we're going to get from these banks? Because we've seen bond yields actually rise since the rate cut, maybe counterintuitively, um, the 10-year well above 4%. Right. Well, we have seen that. And part of that is a reaction to the fact that the 10-year had come down so hard before the well-anticipated Fed rate cut. Now, of course, it's looking at maybe a slower rate of rate cuts going forward than what had been anticipated. Plus, we have the overhang of the unknown of the election and what's going to happen on the deficit. We're certainly seeing some of those long-term um, inflation expectations creeping up because of the impact of the deficit. We, do, we think that the CPI is an important factor in terms of the net interest margin, margin because of the impact on the 10-year. But more fundamentally, it's this balance between what we're seeing with somewhat better still inflation numbers, but potential weakness coming in the economy. All right. So there's some optimism that things like deal making will pick up, also credit card spending. Um, we got that jobs report last week. OK, so right. much better than expected. It showed a pretty strong economy, also strong wage gains. Is that a read through to the banks as well? And if so, are, are there certain banks that benefit more from that strength in the economy, specifically at the consumer level than others? Right. So that may be an impact on the consumer. We think the consumer is still seeing um, some strains because of the inflation that we've been going through and that real impact on the everyday costs that the, that the um, consumer is dealing with. And that has shown with the um, resilience of the consumer as re restaurants and retailers cut prices, then they come back in. That does mean maybe we want to look at some of the more consumer-facing banks, perhaps the Bank of America, perhaps the city, as opposed to the more institutionally focused banks. But the other important factor here is what are we seeing in terms of credit card balances already, which are, are quite high, and are we seeing those delinquency rates start to creep up, which we have been seeing over the last couple of quarters. You know, one other question. I want to ask you about Bank of America very quickly. Uh, Warren Buffett has continued to sell. His holdings now below 10 percent. Piper out with a note today saying now that he's below 10 percent, he doesn't have to report each sale. It could be right. uh, a psychological boost for the stock, at least, because we're not getting these reports that Warren Buffett continues to sell, and it could create some momentum. Uh, do you think that's true for Bank of America, and could it maybe just lift the whole sector that we don't see such an influential money center bank continuing to sell off? It might. Um, you know, we don't know what the plans are for Bank of America from here for, for Berkshire. Um, we do know that, you know, they're very disciplined in taking profits when they think that it's appropriate to take profits. And that actual selling is going to be a bigger impact if they do continue to sell than the psychological lift of not hearing it reported every day. In addition, the fundamentals really do matter more than what we're seeing in terms of other investors or other players owning the stock. So it's going to come back down to net interest margin, cost expenses, what's going on in the mortgage market, and, of course, the deal market.